Right, so we're here in the studio um, with the man, Lee. Um, so I've worked with Lee now since the start of lockdown, and essentially we've worked, he's you know, a professional sportsman, very obsessive, worked from getting his handicap down from sort of five to 0 0.5, very close to scratch where uh, our goal wants to be. So I guess, you know, with Lee's pattern, you know, when we first started working together, it was very much a, a lifty, tilty pattern with a lot of face rotation. Yeah, flip. And you know, one of my big principles and what I'm a massive advocate of is to control the rate of rotation and bring that dispersion in. So I guess that's what we've really worked on. And if that sort of this video can help anyone, that's sort of why I'm doing it. Uh, and Lee's obviously volunteered to, to be the guinea pig. The, the biggest thing for me is when I first came to see you was <clears throat> I've been fighting hitting a, a left to right shot all my since I was this big. Yeah. And my dad put it in my head, I've got to hit a draw, got to hit a draw. So I've always been fighting to try and hit a draw, try and hit a draw, not really knowing how to do it. I feel like the depth in the swing, the more rotate, because I've always got confused with being able to, I've always thought that when, to get rotation, I've got to go flat. Mm -hmm. And so I've always had, a, always had this thing about going flat. And when you watch the TV and you see all the pros, they, they seem to be very, swinging it a lot more upright than me. And I was like, how do they get, how do you get more upright? Because then my hands are coming away from my body, which has always been bad in my head. Because yeah. I'm separating and that's really bad. And separation, I found, separation is not bad, but if there's no rotation this way, then I'm in big trouble. Because I get to here and then I'm, as I come down, I'm, I'm steep and then, then I'm doing what you said and going to try and save it. Yeah. So I've never put the two together. I've never put, Going back, it's separation this way, but with the rotation, it puts me in, in this position, and then that just I think that's that, that's mass that that's my that's my that right there is everything that I need to work on and get right in order for me to hit the ball properly. In order for the down swing sequence to give you a chance, right? Correct. Depth is a key word, it's fire out all over in there. And you see people, you know, trying to retract the arms in, suck the right arm behind, which causes more problems, or trying to keep this tucked in. And loads of different ways in which people are trying to essentially get the hands back. But, you know, essentially the job, of the, the job of the arms in the backswing is to load vertically, right? There's a slight wrist hinge, a slight softening of the right arm, and the left arm works up the chest. It has to work up and down. Yeah. And the force of the rotation, as long as you remain in the front bend tilts that we start with, which is talking about the flat piece, you, yeah. you know, as we start some, with an element of front bend in, in the setup position, if we maintain that and get the arms essentially working up and down up the body, yeah. you know, it's not essentially disconnecting because as we add the rotational force, it slots perfectly in. Yeah. And the relevant amount of depth happens late on. So the arms work in front of us in the takeaway, we don't pull them in early. You know, when we get to position three or left arm parallel, we want it kind of in the middle of our chest, which is where you bang on arm. Yeah. And then we max out rotation to create depth. And that's what that, that, that those two things are where I, when I'm, not playing well, I think that's when it starts to break down. Is that I, I go, I go from, I then start to go. I don't get the, I don't get the rotation. I stop rotating backwards. Now I wrap this way, and I, don't, and I, so I just get, tend to go up, and then I get choppy and swipey. Yeah, and then it becomes or that full shot happens. Yeah, or I, or I, yeah, pull the pull it left. And then, and I'm alright in saying you you you, prefer, you think you play your best goal from, from our discussions. You quite like it when the ball just gently moves to the right. Yeah, but I've, I do. But I've got, I've now I, what I want to do is I, that swing I sent you the other day, which looks really good. Yeah, it looks really good. But in my head, that is so not how I swing it. Yeah, if you know what I mean. I love it. I love looking at it. But I'm working at that in order to get it to get it into. Um, into the position that I got it into, and that is taking the club really far outside my hands. That's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. And then when I get it, when I get it into here, and then actually, and I, that you know, the stick will be put on the ground, yeah, pointing out there to get it up to there, and then to hit it on that thing, and, and then put that in my head is hitting a draw pattern. Yeah, and that's the thing I'm confused about now is. Still hitting it from the inside, but having a little fade pattern. 
Yeah, yeah. That's what that's, well, that's when you move the bass line like a DJ, exactly. right? Exactly. But uh, one thing I did, oh, and I put this video in, uh, I'll somehow get this video that you sent me into this because we can talk about it. But I looked at that, you know, and studied it quite a lot. And, you know, essentially what Backstreet was so good. And this, the, the delivery in the centre of match stayed back perfectly, yeah. but you could still see. Still it. see, yeah. So it's how you get it shallow, which is the key. You know, if I get to the top of my backswing and I tilt, well, that's going to get the club on the inside. Yeah. But essentially, from a face on perspective, that's going to start affecting low point. Yeah. You know, and the lead side gets too high, and occasionally you, you get this display, displacement where the left hip gets outside the angle, which yeah. is cool. And essentially, it's not really the lower body that causes the problem, it's more the top half of your body that gets stuck behind it. And then, what that will do long term, and I did notice this in the swing, is the hand path will then start to track out for a long time. Yeah, instead of going left. Instead of, and the only way it can go left is, yeah, you get to the top of your swing, you get that center of mass back, and then this staying back enables the lead side of the body to go up. Well, I can rotate now to start to get that club head to travel out to the ball, yeah. and then it can arc back inside. And it can be a little fade pattern because you're, in, you're not here. And you can manage. I, I, I'm, can I get to here, and then I'm going, right, I need, I need to somehow get, get back around. My hands are going to go this way, yeah. you know, as opposed to getting to there. The reason why I can't do that is because I haven't gotten to there. You know, we get to a point where the depth's good, but then what you tend to do is you tend to pull the handle down and yeah. steepen the shaft, so this hand gets sort of trapped, and we know this arm gets yeah. trapped behind us. So you yeah. do that, and then you, in this from this position, add the rotation that you want to add, Look at the, the shaft yeah, yeah, you're in. So, yeah. so it's this, your head backing up and this shoulder elevating and the hip sliding is all a reaction to this. Right. Because you, you're a good player, your body's thinking, without swearing, your body's thinking, Jesus Christ, I need to start tilting my that's what we did like, That's what we did last lesson, wasn't it? Was when we, when we get to when we get to here, it was just, it was loading yeah. out like that. So P5, at halfway down, yeah. we want to try and get a sensation that we, we're stacked a bit more. So nose, Center of the stern, yeah. pelvis in line, as opposed to this displacement mm -hmm. early on, which yeah. causes late on stuff. But again, it leads to the shaft. All right, so this hit some. Kind of. So that's a great example. Of, you know, I feel that shot, the block that you hit earlier, or that shot, are the two shots I feel that you're going to hit from the pattern you sent me. Right. So I don't know if you've been doing that, but if you look at the numbers. Where did it go? Look, we see the yellow light started pretty neutral and it went to the left. So if you look at the data, yeah. so the club path was 1.1 in throughout, right? So one degree, yeah. yeah, but the face angle was shut. Yeah, and that's why it was drawing. Pretty simply, you can see it's pretty close to center strike, maybe slightly toe side. A little bit on the two shallow side, so two degrees down. Typically, tour average is around four or five degrees down. With an iron. Again, that links to if you add tilt. Yeah, you're gonna get shallow, right? Yeah, you know. So we like to have a little bit more access to the driver because we're trying to swing up. Yeah, but with an iron, we want to try and make sure we're on top of it. On this next one, you're gonna feel like the right. We crunch the, the obliques down. Oh, the back swing. On the way down. The swing oh, right. The back swing looks really good. Yeah, love the back swing. So you've got this nice stretch. So eventually, this seam lines round to the ball. In transition, you want to feel like you're adding a little bit more rotation early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a little bit less displacement in the hips. But the main thing at impact, I want you to feel like. You're in right bend for a lot longer right. as right. you're adding rotation. Just make, make a swing to the top, and we're just going to chip this. And then move down to five and stop. Yeah, and then just turn the lower with your left side. Perfect. And you see then there's that small bleed. Yeah. Interesting to see what that does to the, to the path. So that moves the path now four degrees from out to in, and moves your attack angle down to five degrees. Right. So you're a little bit steeper, which is well, not too steep. Yeah. You know, someone like Brooks is like eight or nine down. Is it? Justin Rose is like seven down. But typically, Tori average is around five down, which is what he was there. But you can see the path goes four degrees from out to him without swiping. So yeah, that, that's the move there. Yeah, Line of force on the handle moves more out towards the ball rather than yeah, down towards the floor, yeah. which pitches the shaft back. You don't yeah. do that. No. And as you move through, you rotate. Yeah, rotate more. Yeah. Way more open. Yeah. Just move the path. Lower exit, based on the control. Now, if you want to draw it from there, you add right bend. That's it. But you don't change the pivot pattern. So the pivot's still on top. Yeah. As you start to start to turn this low, mm -hmm. you feel that you crunch your right obliques down. And that's going to stop. Yeah, it will stop it going that far left. So if I eventually don't add as much right bend, so it gets to top of my swing, 
stay in flexion in turn, hands move more out, line of force goes out. Yeah. If I don't add anything, the pitch will stay you know, shallow, but the path will move more across the body. Right. If I get to the top of the body, top of the um, back swing, sorry, add the left side, but keep the right crunch in the right, and this is why like, DJ does this amazingly, keeps the hands in for a little longer, and now although I feel like I'm exiting left, it comes from in here to exit around me. Right. Move to five, keep on top, and then around the corner. So good. Look at that. And that's just going to move like about two inches to the right. Yeah. So, so good. Move to five, keep on top, and then around the corner. That's so good. Look at that. And that's just going to move like about two inches to the right. Yeah. So, so good. So what, I guess, you know, and this is going to get more for the video, that, that half now moves 1.9 out to win. Yeah. That is literally perfect numbers. Perfect numbers for like a one or two yard plane. So you've moved the path 1.9 out to in. Yeah. You've now shifted that from two degrees down to five degrees down. Yeah. You know, so it's a little bit steeper, and the, and the face is 0.3 degrees open to the target, which is why it's sort of just missed right. right. So it's it's 2.2 degrees right in the face. So it's yeah. really subtle, you know, which produced 250 RPM of spin to the right. Last time you were playing really well early on, when you start pulling it. Yeah. And because of the fear of the pull. It's really like, you almost like resist against that, keep going that way. Well, if it's going left for me, and it, and it gets to here, it's, I don't, I'm going, because I'm, I've come out here, I'm going, it's going left, so then I'm going like that, and then I start hitting that bit of orange. It starts going, uh, no, first of all, it starts to straighten up and bleed, and then it just goes worse and worse and worse. So yeah. I go to the other end of the spectrum, can't it, because <laughs> I'm like, DJ is a great example of this, or, or Ram. No, when you start and keep, you know, you don't allow your, your upper and lower weight to separate too much and the hands move more out in transitions. So you're not, you're just changing the line of force a little bit. The actual center of mass stays more inside than normal. Yeah. Then you continue rotating while you're crunching your obliques. So your hands now, at this point, this is a, the exaggerated feel, right? So your hands, if anything, are outside of your left shoulder. Yeah. The center of mass is inside. Mm -hmm. The hands can't continue to track out. So what actually happens is the hands start to track in from here. Yeah. Now, as the, the force of the handle is pushing down in that way, that sends the club out to the ball. So the path is actually still coming from the inside. Yeah, yeah. But the hand half is not. It's no. just how, you know, it's, it's just, just the relationship between this bit and that bit. And as you said, people go, I want to swing from the inside. I want to pull my arm back and start swinging like this. Well, yeah, that's what I was doing at the But as soon as that handle moves away, the club flips in, you can't control it. Yeah, control yeah, the face. Like that. Yeah, which is what we hate. And that pattern there for me is your blueprint. If you get there, look at that last ball flight. It's literally moved about half a yard to the right. And it's essentially that transition, because you've done so much back swing work now, just try to transition and move that way. And you probably feel, do you feel like you're lower on the exit? Yeah, absolutely. And to change your pattern takes months and months, if not years of work. And people don't get it, you know, we're trying to move a couple of degrees here and there every time. But as long as, I think you've got to take, you know, all of your, like, concentration away from the golf club and just get into five there. And obviously you move so well naturally. And the pitch of the shaft, because you're not adding nothing, no. what you've got to try and do from the top is get, stop getting this pull. As soon as you pull, essentially, you know, I'm going to use this stick to demonstrate. If I get to the top and I pull on the handle, naturally, the top of the stick is going to want to flip out. Yeah. And then from here, this can't continue to work out because the ball's down there. <laughs> so the body goes, Jesus, I need to do this. Yeah. To try and get it back in again and realign it. Yeah, yeah. But if I get to the top and do nothing with my hands, I'm barely holding it and then start on the ground, naturally that pitch stays back. Then you think, okay, well now I can just fire. Well, well later on, it, just go back to that bit. So when you get to that bit, it's the same thing because the ball's down there and the club's back there. In order to get the club on there, the, left, the hands have to go that way. Yeah. And so the body thinks, well, I can now, I can lose. I don't yeah. need to stall out, I can just keep going. Around, and then that's that turn, rotating around the corner. Yeah. You keep, as long as you stay in your seat, you keep rotating and keep the pelvis up, and that's how you break speed off the left side. Yeah. And then you can start using the ground, so the pelvis speed goes up. So there's all this stuff, but essentially it sounds really complicated, people watch this and think, oh, it's a lot, but for you, all you need to do is make the exact same backspin, making sure that we complete the rotation, yeah. which gets the hands in the right spot, and then start from the ground. Yeah. Or start from the left shoulder. Start from your lead side, as opposed to what you tend to do, is start from this side and pull this. Well, don't do that. Just start from here. Yeah. So you start at a different area of the body, and then from there, it just, it, to me, this, what in my head, the, the bit that makes sense is when I get to here, I've turned off 
the stack and I need to put it back on again. I need to go back to that position. So that's your feel. So when I go like this, my feel is I need to get back there. Yeah, perfect. So good. So, so good. Had that feel. Brilliant. You can see it as well. Look at this pattern. So solid. You're just not going to miss from there. Oh, I love that. Yeah, and look, it. can you see how you stay low? You are? Yeah. You're not the point that you're thinking too much that. Yeah, the exit's so much better. Yeah. Nice. Load it into five. And then rotate through. Turn it up. Load it down. I'm done. Love it. Make the same transition. Okay, so as you start to do it, yeah, you can keep the face alignment a bit more neutral. Yeah, and then you work more under this one rather than across it. There you go. Oh, I wish that picked it up, that was perfect. Did you feel how that was more drawn by yourself? Yeah. So it's exactly the same pattern. Yeah. But from five, you don't go inflection and around. Go around. You get you go five. You do it like this. And you push. And then you push. And then the path is going to be two or three degrees to the right as opposed to one or two degrees to the left. Yeah. The face doesn't change. Yeah. So you just you just play around with the baseline, that's it. And it's so simple then in, in beer. What's the biggest feel change from the start of the session to now? Oh definitely definitely I feel more stacked and, and that's that in my head. It's like being stacked oh, everything on the way down, half way down. Yeah. I'm at P5 but I'm here. I feel like if I'm in this position, I'm I'm pretty much there because I just always there in your feet at that point. But I think my pressure is yeah, probably a little bit more down your left side. Yeah, yeah. And then wanting to go on the left heel a bit, yeah, in order to get that hip back and then up. Do you have any awareness of any part of your left side being long? Because it is, man, like this is drastically like even your left ear is long. Yeah, you know, because you tend to get this tilt back. Yeah, the whole of your lead side goes up. So it's just that sensation. So you don't, it's not a lowering of this way. It's not a lowering of this. No. It's just the way that, you know, the axis in which you turn. So you get to the W swing, my shoulders are, are pitched this way. If I keep that pitch the same and just work around, I'm on top of it. Yeah. If I get to this now, this, that's what you tend to use to do. This is why it's got back. You just go back to look at the first position. Yeah, right there. If I replace, if I, in two movements, I put both the shoulders back where they were, and so then that shoulder where that is now, that is perfect. That's exactly well, that means you're rotating your tilt. Obviously, then it has to be a little yeah, bit loud, but yeah, view. Okay. So it goes to that way. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So if I go to there and then I get there and then I just replace that with there, yeah. in theory, that's, yeah. and that's yeah. what that looks like to me. And it makes sense. You know, it's not just turn and turn because there is an element of there. Yeah, right. Yeah. But you're right, you're going, instead of turn and tilt, you're now staying. So you get down to halfway down, it's here. Now yeah. it's just that feel, but you can see this is lower. Mm. This is lower. This side of your body isn't extending up like that. And your pelvis is not starting to kick forward yet. And do it smooth, no stop. Yeah. Yeah, good. So you don't wanna, do you know you said, you like to- What were you doing then? Just pushing my head back? Oh, just, just, I didn't leave I just gave you a reference and so, so you didn't do this? No, because I felt it. Touch my cheek and it made me yeah. go, whoa! It made you think I'm a stop there. <laughs> could, you, could you do that on the course for all good? It's extensive, but I'll do it. <laughs> Every round. So get to the top of your swing, don't touch this, just stay where you are. I'm going to hit it. Uh, sort of the so if you, I don't mind if you move an inch, but no more than that. And then feel like you move slightly away from me as you know. There you go. That's it. And then you almost guarantee all turf strike. And what, this is like a secondary piece. You've got to make sure that if we're going to have a really passive phase, that is set. Yeah. But it gets open, because we used to get steep, mm -hmm. and then you have a passive base, you're going to hit blocks. But I, yeah. I don't even worry about that, just move it on the way back. So like you do with the takeaway, just keep it a little stronger, and then, yeah. And then it'll feel like, just for a half down to the wall, and I don't hit it. So it's the top, work out, and then work into the wall, make sure it's square, there you go. Uh, do you have more rotated while there? Yeah. Not just in the pelvis, but even yeah. in the rib cage, right? Yeah. So you want to feel like the left side of your obliques is still pulling around as well. Don't just, that's it, that's it. See how much more front bend you've got now? Yeah. Use, because you, you, you can rotate your hips. It's the top half. There you go. Lovely. There's your gentle phase. What do you feel have been the biggest thing that you've taken away? So what, when did you come in? And when well, I came in definitely still tilty and a bit confused when I get when I, on the way down. And my, my thoughts before I came was, got to whip it more on the inside. And so 
in my head I was doing very, very loopy, but that then gave me still the tilt. And the result wasn't too bad on the range because I'm kind of matching it up. But when I get out of the course, it then can go both ways. That's what I was finding. So I think now with working what we've done today is getting to this and then actually forgetting about the path of the club coming up from the inside. Because as soon as I get into a stack position like that, the club drops, the angle of the club shallows. So I'm in that position anyway. And then instead of like doing my normal hip up, shoulder up, this one I get to here is for this, my, my left pocket to go down and backwards in my head is, the, is my feeling. Yeah. So I get to there, stack it, and then it's that. And it just feels, it just feels like I can't hit it left. I don't which you like, you love that. Which I like that, I like that feeling of being able to and also, it puts me when I get to when I get to this position here on the way down, I feel so solid that I can actually hit it as hard as I want, as opposed to when I get and I hit it hard anyway. You know what? You play with it. When I get to here, if I hit it. If I start hitting it hard from here on my club, the shafts like that. I can only go like that. I can't I you can see that in the bottom. You put you know, your level. You can feel the late on. Yeah, and when I'm when I'm playing well, the time is all right. I'm like, good for it, it's so good, Chris. Yeah, but actually. The mechanics of it are slowly changing, and so there's always going to be, when I'm not playing so well, it's still, you know, I'm going from level par to like seven or eight over, and it's like, you know, so in, you know, up and down. Just their variables, right? Yeah, all we do is I feel it here, I, when I get to here, and I'm just doing that, it feels more like it's going to be level oh, par or one over or two over. It doesn't feel like, and the like biggest thing, part, really. well, <laughs> not the moment. The the, uh, the biggest thing with that is when I was on the way in when I was driving the car, I was like, where do I get in trouble? And it's my driver. So this these this process of getting into a better position and then is when I hit a bad drive, because I hit it reasonably far, it gets me in all sorts of trouble and I'm double bogey. So my scores are always gonna be if I can just get the driver with this, because obviously there's a lot more it's a bigger swing, there's a lot more <laughs> A lot more time speed. for me to get into the yeah, speed into this position and then going flip, push, yeah. you, know, back, you know, that type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just the amount of rotate. If you yeah. only rotate it because you left it too late, it's going to go yeah. push cutty. If you do save it, it's going to snap hook. Yeah. So, like I said, it's the two way thing where it's just that rate of rotation. You know, the funny can't... thing was, I played the other day and I got some, you know, my new PXGs and they, so I was it, and I, I hit my first try poorly and I was like, got an awesome. Rescue. So I was in rescue. I'm playing at the course of it's okay to be rescue. And because I was in rescue, I'm in the game, and I was it's striking it all right. And I scored really, I scored really well because I'm not out of the game. When my driver goes wrong, I'm out of the game. So yeah, that's the biggest thing. He's getting driver up. Oh no.